How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. Today, I get to speak with Brian Harrington. This is someone that's been in the crypto space for a long time, specifically looking at Bitcoin way back in 2015. He's really devoted a lot of his capital and a lot of his time to Bitcoin. So we're going to ask him about Bitcoin. I'm going to split this into a couple different videos. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this one. I'll also leave a link to Brian in case you want to go follow him. He definitely should have more subscribers. There's also a link down there to Margex in case you want to trade cryptocurrency. You don't need a VPN on Margex, so anyone's welcome to go try it out. Of course, always read their terms and conditions. There's also a link down there to HG Algo in case you want to have some help with your trading or your dollar cost averaging. We have bullish momentum and bearish momentum indicators. And we also have dollar cost average indicators too, which tell you when it might be a good time to dollar cost average into the market. So definitely check this out underneath the video as well. How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. I have with me Brian Harrington. Brian, thanks so much for coming on today. What's up, guys? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Okay, so I'm going to get right into it. I saw you posted a video today. 0 0.01 Bitcoin is better than 0.18 Ethereum. Can you explain yeah. what that video is about? I didn't get a chance to watch it yet. Yeah, so 0 0.01 Bitcoin is about 500 bucks. When you do 0 0.01 Bitcoin, what's that price in or what's the price of that much Ethereum? It's 0.18. And for me, I'm just taking those numbers because it's an easy number to like wrap your head around. Like you have 500 bucks, you're sitting here on YouTube, you're researching cryptocurrency and you're just, which is better? Like that's just the Bitcoin and Ethereum are right there at the top of coin market cap, which one is better? And something that I realized, like, honestly, like I've been thankful to talk to you like over the years, just about YouTube and how cryptocurrency information like spreads on YouTube in general. And I realized like, I've been watching videos on this stuff for a long time. Like I've been watching videos about Bitcoin and about cryptocurrency on YouTube for 10 years. And so kind of what I've tried to do over this past little bit is make the video that like I had wanted to see when I first searched it. And so the video is about just if you have 500 bucks, what should you be thinking about? What questions should you be asking yourself to make the decision between Bitcoin and Ethereum? Yeah. So what was your conclusion? Why did you pick Bitcoin over Ethereum at this point? Yeah, so, and I specifically say this in the video, like I'm trying to give things a really fair shake. And I specifically said this in the video, that this is not like typical altcoin bashing. Like it's not typical altcoin bashing. Truly, it's taken me like years to come up with what I think in the video. And it's this, if you have a specific thesis for why you're picking Ethereum over Bitcoin, or if you have a specific like investment reason, then terrific, terrific. But if you don't, like if you don't, if you don't have any opinions about the competing L1s or how like um, Ethereum L2s detract from the value of the ETH token itself, if you, if you don't have opinions about that, or if you don't understand what I was just saying right there, then, 0.01 Bitcoin like is the choice because the narrative around Bitcoin and the product market fit of Bitcoin is more of a slam dunk. And that's true. Like that's true. Understanding Ethereum is harder than understanding Bitcoin. And so that's what I'm telling people is like, if you have a reason and you've watched enough videos, then terrific. Then the video is not for you. But if you don't and you need advice on what questions to ask, then the video tells you what questions to ask. Or if you don't feel like asking them, it explains why Bitcoin's better. Sure. Okay, cool. I'll have to check it out, the longer version after this. But I agree with you. It's really hard to understand how layer twos impact Ethereum's price. Um, there's just a lot going on there. Now, kind of moving away from Ethereum, just back to Bitcoin. I've made some videos in the past, like how much Bitcoin is enough, how much Bitcoin you need, how much you need to retire. We're going to go through some of those, but like, if someone were to ask you how much Bitcoin is enough, I'm just buying now. Do I have enough? What would you say to them? Yeah. So I would say like, so the video like 0.21 is kind of this like goal that I have in my head of like 0.21 Bitcoin. Cause again, it's like right around that, like 10,000 ish dollars. Like I like that. It's a number that people can hold in their head of like, that's a great, you know, emergency fund. It's a great amount of money. Everyone's situation is different for sure, but it's a great thing that like makes you feel good and you can hold it and you can kind of envision a vacation around it. You can kind of envision an emergency fund around it, but it's not necessarily like kind of a life-changing 
amount for a lot of people. And what I try to relay is that 0.21 is a life-changing amount of Bitcoin. Like if you're already here on YouTube, watching cryptocurrency videos, watching Bitcoin videos, what you truly need to understand is 0.21 Bitcoin like is a significant amount of Bitcoin in the grand scheme of things. So if you're there, you should feel good. And then when you dial down of like, if you have just been like dollar cost averaging, just kind of getting going and you're sitting at like 0.05 and you just feel like, this is nothing. Like, this is nothing. I just watch like all these people on YouTube all the time. And like, I watch the people on CNBC and all this stuff. And this just feels like nothing. Like I'm never going to get like one full Bitcoin. You can even from that position kind of just re-examine everything. And you can ask yourself the deeper questions of like, what is money? Like, why is this interesting? Why is it not going away? And 0.05 is a step like on that journey. Like you, it does take kind of getting some amount under your belt to incentivize the further research and incentivize the further, um, you know, looking into it. But then I also, inside these discussions of like, do I have enough? I do. I like, I am the guy that completely just like swipes the question to the side. And I'm like, but is it replacing dollars in your life? And I just jump straight there. And I'm just like, dude, look, Bitcoin is better money than dollars. And that is a very, very interesting thing that the world is still coming to grips with. And so you having 0.05 Bitcoin, the bigger thing you need to ask yourself is, is this a stock? Like, is this a stock in my life that just is what it is? And I'm flipping it for more dollars. Or am I like semi interested in this broader thing that's happening of money having like a technology upgrade in the world? Sure. I think maybe sometimes you start a conversation with someone that's maybe newer to crypto and they say, well, should I buy $100 of Bitcoin? Is that enough to even start? Should I even pay attention to it? And then someone like you might say, oh, well, it's a better version of the dollar or better than the dollar. Mm -hmm then yeah. I, sometimes people roll back and they're like, okay, well, maybe I don't understand that enough. Like, why is it better than the dollar? If if we roll back yeah. to there, why is Bitcoin better than the dollar? Why should I put anything into Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah. Um, so simply put, like, it's not controlled by a small group of people. Like the mm -hmm. dollar is controlled by a small group of people. The price, like the lending rate price of, and we this is weird, like of money having a price, right? Like money is supposed to be the thing that prices other things. Money has a price and there's a small group of centralized people based on politics that choose the price of dollars. And for us working our entire life and investing in assets that are priced in dollars and affected by dollar lending rates, that's frustrating. Like that's super frustrating that our parents and our grandparents and us grew up working for this thing this like thing that supposedly holds value but it doesn't hold value it leaks value and it leaks value bitcoin because of its fixed supply is a brand new way of thinking about money and so that is going to cause like it's going to cause lots of differences in the world that we're still finding out like we're still finding out it's definitely a bet right like i'm very much in the camp of it's better for the world but we can definitely agree on the world would operate differently than it does today. Yeah, I think Bitcoin gives hope too. I When I started learning about how much the money supply increases and how it's very similar to even the S&P 500, you, you know, when you start investing, you hear that, oh, the S&P 500 returns so much better than inflation, like 7% higher. Mm -hmm. But then you start looking mm -hmm. at how much the money supply increases and you're like, it's pretty much a wash. It, like you yeah. basically are just, if you invest, you're just storing that wealth in something that is the same and yeah. maybe some assets are locked like your house and that relatively becomes less expensive because your mortgage is the same but like a lot of things exponentially get more expensive and bitcoin's the only thing that can really outperform so like in tier so index funds go up because of just the flow of funds yeah the flow of funds interior square footage like the reason why there's so many real estate maximalists and the reason why real estate is such just like tried and true way to like be a millionaire in the united states like it's just the the main most way that everyone tells you is because interior square footage is a better store of value than the dollar like and people are using interior square footage as their money 
Like that's actually their money. They use dollars are an L2 of interior square footage base money in America. Yeah. Yeah. And I've shown the graphs. Uh, I think it's from priced in Bitcoin or I forgot the website exactly, but where they show the, the price of a house in Bitcoin. And it's scary how cheap or how how it's become so much uh, cheaper to buy houses in Bitcoin because it, it, it yeah. makes you realize that, yeah, if you bought real estate five years ago, 10 years ago, you think it's a great investment, but it's really not compared to Bitcoin. Like uh, you're missing out if you look over a, t a longer time horizon. No. And here, I'll challenge people yeah. with this too. Like just to for measure your net worth in Bitcoin, measure the price of your house in Bitcoin. I'm not anti owning your own house. Like I own my own house. I think it's sick that Sam owns his own house. Like I'm pro real estate. I'm pro tracking your net worth in Bitcoin and in dollars to watch that change over time. Because yeah. I'm pro making Bitcoin your money. So there are other assets in the world. And this is where I'm trying to bring this refreshed kind of energy to YouTube of like, because for so long, I think there was just like, oh, just like covering altcoins and like covering Bitcoin as like digital gold or whatever. And and then, and even we've talked in the past about how the FIRE movement just like had their own convoluted view of crypto. And then you have the like, the just boomer financial advisors that have their, fi like I'm, dude, like let's, it's 2024. Like, let's get rid of all of that. Let's get rid of all of that. Measure your net worth in your house and your other crypto investments in Bitcoin and in dollars and just get in the mindset of measuring things in a multi-currency world. Yeah, yeah, I think that's smart. We talked about 0.21 Bitcoin. What do you think it'll mean to be a whole coiner in five years? Like, will that be significant? Will it be enough to retire? Is it like, okay, well, you know, anyone that's got a million dollars can buy a whole coin. What What do you think? Yeah, I, I definitely think significant. Like I think owning one full Bitcoin is super significant and I think here in the reason when it became more and more significant to me was this thing of there's only 21 million. And then if you look up how many millionaires there are in the United States or how many millionaires there are in the world, which I had never thought about that number really. Like I had never thought about that number. But when you look at that, there's only this amount of millionaires in the world. And then there are only this many Bitcoin that comparison does like start to draw itself and like growing up um not with like millionaire family background like that's very interesting like that's truly very interesting like that is what makes bitcoin kind of a like, this is a speculative thing to say but it, it's the it's the surest asymmetric thing in the world like that's the reason why it won't go away and that's the reason why it's constantly talked about constantly talked about constantly talked about is it it's the most sure thing or it's the strongest narrative in the world of anything with asymmetric upside yeah we'll get to what's happening in the market right now but last thing kind of thinking about the future if you were going to retire or if you had like an average person that wanted to retire, what do you think they need to accumulate in Bitcoin? Obviously, there are going to be price fluctuations, but like what's a good goal? Like, is it two Bitcoin, 10 Bitcoin in 10 years, let's say? Mm. I'm putting you on the spot with math, too. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very on the spot. I think uh, this is kind of this. I think I'm going to give the word. I'm stuck in the like, I can't envision what retirement is. Like, I can't envision what retirement is. And I don't know what I, I struggle to answer the question because I want there to be more native Bitcoin kind of retirement financial products. Okay. I want there to be the ability to like buy your groceries with Bitcoin. Like I'm still stuck in that camp and I think it's still super fair criticism. And so that's where I struggle with the like setting a certain number of Bitcoin needed to retire because if you save up all this Bitcoin you need to retire, but you still have to load it on a Coinbase and then move it back to your checking account. I I hope that we I hope that we beat that. Like I hope the products step themselves up and we beat that 
and that's my current like mental blocker on like on like putting my flag in the ground on an answer yeah. no i think that makes sense and for most people i don't think they have that issue that you have but that's because you think about things in bitcoin you don't think about bitcoin as an investment as much compared to like for me i think okay well if i have 10 bitcoin they're worth a hundred thousand dollars each i can withdraw this amount just like i would sell an s p 500 index fund then i yeah. load the cash over but you're like yeah. you're thinking about it as your base currency yeah no absolutely man like and that's where and i'm i'm very in the mindset of like look like say you are a family that has like six and a half bitcoin like i do think that the brainstorming game of being like two and a half bitcoin is for like very like family legacy multi-generation like type stuff and then the like one and a half to like two and a half three bitcoin is for like you and your partner to like you know early retire and like live out like those years and get into like all the new longevity stuff that's available or whatever like that that is like where my brain goes um okay. that's where my brain goes thinking about it okay i think some people think about bitcoin differently obviously than you do like mm -hmm. uh sometimes i hear people saying that they're gonna go all in on bitcoin and personally when i hear that i'm like that's kind of irresponsible to go all into an asset but i think they think about it differently than you do like i've i've known you for years and i know that you kind of went all into bitcoin now maybe not all your income was going into bitcoin but like you learned how to use bitcoin as your base currency like you convert it if i remember right you converted all your dollars into bitcoin and yeah you you still have a house that's worth us dollars you still have probably yeah. some index funds and stuff like that but like how do you interpret that when someone says they're going all into bitcoin do you think of that as like a real degen thing because they're thinking about it in usd terms or are you thinking like oh good we got another bitcoiner i think it's very i think people i'll be a little stereotypical okay i think people that say that are still kind of in their like singlehood like days of their life like when i started when i got into bitcoin i was middle 20s libertarian like person with a simple like personal finance life and so the idea of watching youtube for number go up combined with the like uh mission and this like um i am very like purpose-based as far as like seeing bitcoin replace a dollar like in the world like those th the number go up for my own personal life and you bitcoin replacing the dollar for the good of the world is like very i ping people that watch me like i ping pong back and forth between those very fast because it's the same thing in my brain so um when i hear people say they don't want to go all in on bitcoin or are going all in on bitcoin or like screw my retirement funds screw real estate like screw all this stuff like all in on bitcoin that's fine for being like the single digital nomad person or whatever but there's very very like limited information and limited kind of content for that just like classic w2 employee family mortgage person that is also still motivated by the philosophy of Bitcoin replacing the dollar. Because mm -hmm. what's fed to those people is they're just Bitcoin as an investment, da 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 da, 5% allocation, like ETF, like that stuff, right? And then go all in on Bitcoin, burn the ships, like real estate stocks, like all this stuff is only really stuck in that like nomad land. And I've like grown, I'm I'm older now and I've felt all of that dude like I've felt all of that and so I what I hear in that is like dude love the passion like I agree the world needs more of that passion the world 100% needs more of that passion what I hope happens is that more and more of those mindsets grow up and realize that like there's there's certain like being being rich in america comes with influence like and i think a lot of people that are rich in america are kind of passively like on the side of the establishment and i hope the pick people that become like rich in bitcoin can 
stick to their guns on like the philosophy of Bitcoin while at the same time, like meeting quote unquote, like normies where they're at. So that's everything I think about when I hear someone say, oh, I'm going to go on on Bitcoin and they start talking like negatively on all other financial assets or whatever. It just yeah. comes from a place of like you, your, your financial life is like too simple then. Like you need to, you have to level up in order for the entire movement like to win. Yeah, just become more mature so that way you can bring more people in. And yeah, and measure other assets in Bitcoin. Like something that bothers me about like, oh, just this, kind of tangential, but like something that bothers me about like, m like Michael Saylor and like MicroStrategy and stuff, like stacking all that Bitcoin is like, that's terrific. Like that's terrific. You're crushing it, da 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 da, all this stuff. And he's been pivoting the company into like being Bitcoin development centric or whatever. But I'm like, bro, you could have started that a year ago of like talking more about paying employees in Bitcoin telling vendors that they need to be paid in Bitcoin or you're going to find new vendors. Like, dude, start to really use your influence to move Bitcoin into like the guts and the daily machine of that. And so when I hear a Bitcoiner saying, oh, I'm going to go all in on Bitcoin and not buy a house, I'm like, dude, so you're abandoning like whatever town you live in, you're like giving up physical ground. Like in the global game of like politics and influence, you're literally giving up physical ground to other people that then have dollars as their base currency. Like the philosophy should be to get Bitcoin to beat dollars and have all assets measured in Bitcoin. Like that's what's going to cement Bitcoin as an ex like global reserve currency. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that makes sense. You talked about microstrategy there obviously some other big institutions have been coming in the space recently. What are your thoughts about BlackRock Fidelity uh, buying Bitcoin, but really doing none of the other stuff? Like, I guess they're giving some education about Bitcoin, but not like they're not trying to convert people to think about Bitcoin uh, differently. They're just saying this is yeah. an investment product. Is that inherently yeah. bad or good for the space? I think it's fine. Like I'm, I think it's, I think it's neutral to good. I think it's good. I, I am definitely in the camp of this feels cheesy to say, and I, and I want to put more language around it, but I'm, I'm still, in, I'm in the camp of everything is good for Bitcoin because mm -hmm. what I just described of like what Bitcoin's trying to do as far as like just growing to become the like global base currency of the world is going to require so many different kinds of people that think so many different kinds of ways and need so many different kinds of buckets and wrappers and products to like to participate with bitcoin in that this is positive like i think it's positive and like watching the etf volume numbers blow out the other like numbers of other types of etfs it's just continuing to like pour salt on the wound of like bitcoin is better bitcoin is better bitcoin is better like they literally look at the data however which way you want to like yeah. bitcoin is the zeitgeist it is the most interesting thing in the world and the numbers prove it out whatever way you want to like look at it and so i think that etfs are a corporate layer two of bitcoin and i think they are fine and good a simple example of this is like I use the Fidelity like ETF inside our health savings account. So mm -hmm. for example, like as far as I'm aware, there's no health health savings account available in the US that that has native Bitcoin. In. So if we get to the point where doctors are accepting Bitcoin for payment and health savings account providers have native Bitcoin in it so that instead of using a debit card to pay for the doctor, I'm able to move it to my wallet and then pay the doctor through the health savings account. Like that day is terrific. And I hope that day comes. Right now, it's positive that I was able to take money away from US treasuries and put it into a Bitcoin ETF inside Fidelity. Because again, that's like, signal and signal and signal through the system and through the system bitcoin is better than dollars okay i had a different question i wanted to ask you before this but uh this just came to my head this is a really selfish question because it's one that i've been thinking about a lot with these etfs um you just mentioned you put some in your hsa i have some in my hsa i have some in my solo 401k i've been ping-ponging the idea around whether i want to put 
more of my stack within retirement accounts or have them in just just a normal account where I can withdraw them or I can sell them. I don't know if we're in the same camp. Like I plan on taking profits less in Bitcoin than other cryptocurrencies, but there are two sides of the coin where, yeah, I could hold on to this for a very long time if Bitcoin goes up to 2 million versus the US dollar, right? Uh, 30 years from now, like it would be great to have that tax free. On the other hand, if I play the cycles, right? Uh, and I sell at 250,000, we go down to 100,000 or something like it would make sense to take profits first in the retirement account as opposed to um like uh pay taxes uh on it because i just don't have to like i said pay the taxes and i can time it a little bit better if you had you obviously have some crypto um in retirement accounts what are you pulling first because obviously they're just like two sides of that coin do you want to pay more taxes or do you want to leave it in there to grow more tax free just go cycle to cycle or do you not even care because you're just stacking and you're never going to sell so I, I don't like the framing of I'm stacking and never going to sell. I don't like that framing. And so I'm trying to steer away from that because I think that is also very simplistic. Like I put that in the camp of the going all in on Bitcoin. <laughs> excuse, excuse me. I hate, I hate that term now, the whole like stack and never sell. Okay. I prefer like, and this is a little nuanced, but like, I prefer the idea of like buying things with Bitcoin. Again, I prefer like I'm looking at my life and I'm like my checking account, my savings account, my retirement account. So my retirement account is 100% Bitcoin. My savings account is 95% Bitcoin. My checking account is currently 100% USD. That's like literally me sitting right here today. Like when I go bucket by bucket in my life, my retirement account is 100% Bitcoin. My savings account is 95% Bitcoin. My checking account is 100% USD, okay? So when I think about Bitcoin products that are out there, I have my like dream thing of like every single one of those buckets being 100% and like ADP payroll, like running Bitcoin and Walmart running Bitcoin, okay? That's the world I'm like preparing for. So as far as like, but... Here's a, like a very real like example. Like I've been like pursuing a different venture like for the last like year. And so I like haven't been, haven't been working. I've used Bitcoin like peer to peer to buy dollars. And then I've walked into a bank and paid my mortgage like with dollars. Like, mm -hmm. so I've bought dollars, the currency that my mortgage requires and I've paid them with paper money because that was the product that was available. Like the easiest product to pay your mortgage with Bitcoin today is to go to a Bitcoin meetup, swap currencies, and then pay your mortgage with paper money. And so that, so in terms of like using Bitcoin as my money, bear market or bull market, it doesn't really deter, I don't really think about it in terms, I, I honestly don't really think about Bitcoin in terms of cycles. Like I think about my life in terms of like, my goals and like my career goals and how old my kids are and like that kind of stuff. And so I'm constantly, I'm constantly managing how much Bitcoin, how much USD based on the products that are available and based on my current like life goals. So I'm not great at like timing things around cycles. Gotcha. So you're not sitting there um, trying to take profits next bull run. It's not like you're even you're not like, oh, I'm 99% Bitcoin, but I want to be 95% Bitcoin for liquidity. So now I'm going to go sell some Bitcoin. It's just like when I need cash, I sell my or trade my Bitcoin and that's it. You want to be when I need dollars, I dollars. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Even, and that's coming from someone that's been through two cycles going into the third, um, or I guess maybe three. Yeah. Cause you've been around for nine years. Like you still don't want to play the cycles at all, knowing that the last four have all like 70 percent drop you're not interested in that yeah i just never have like i just never have like and that's and i think that's because like the philosophy and the investing is like tied together yeah okay fair enough this may be something that you're not interested in but last question um well i guess two more so we, i we talked about how institutions are coming into the space. It seems like 
it, it's moved up like every cycle. Like first it was individuals, then companies, then institutions and countries. Like what's next? Like, is it a bigger country rubber stamping? Is it Amazon saying we're going to keep a corporate treasury? Like what, what is the next thing that gets people pumped up and gets people buying? So the first thing that popped in my head was probably the biggest like up and down, uh, like emotionally was when Tesla like installed Bitcoin on their checkout screen. Okay. Because when Tesla installed Bitcoin on their checkout screen, they dude, they used BTC pay server. Like they went and used the most open source, just like straight up payment process that, that there was the engineers at Tesla even like gave fixes, like gave patches to like the, the open source repo. Okay. And then they installed it very clean looking on like their, cause they have a sick checkout screen. Okay. That was the most like normalization of like Bitcoin as a currency, like I'd seen or can I think about. It, okay. So the fact that like McDonald's and Starbucks and El Salvador, like take Bitcoin, like that's awesome. Like that was the thing and they can travel there and do that or whatever. But then when that was there, this thing of if Tesla or like Apple was like, you have to pay in Bitcoin. And I'm not saying they will do that. I'm just saying if they did that, people would figure it out. Like people would figure it out. The whole like, ah, it's too hard or whatever. Like that would, no, that'd be gone. Like that'd be gone. People would figure it out. And there'd be such financial incentive to like figure it out that it would be like groundbreaking. Okay. So there is like a little bit of that in my head that like, a big company just like or i i think a smaller version of that would be yeah like if if walmart did just like turn on bitcoin payments and it was just like so normalized that the best part about it is all the training material having to like flow through the staff and flow through the staff uh just like that like for example lowe's lowe's just added apple pay and like i'm pumped like i love apple pay like it's like that it's that i think that's so the more that I've like been around and I'm like, getting into this, I think it is just gonna be a slow grind of like one by one, those types of things happening. But I don't think it's going to be this like groundbreaking thing when it happens. Okay. So the like the next thing, the next big thing probably just still is the ETF story. Like honestly, it probably just still is the ETF story of just watching the volume just increase and increase and increase. And a lot of other people that I, I tried to not be the like corporate pontificating guy or whatever, but there are the other people out there that like institutional investors and stuff that are like the financial advisors haven't even started selling the ETF yet. Like yeah. the amount of annual reviews and all this stuff. Like my first job out of college was for a financial advisor, like a small credit union financial advisor. And like, so I would like, I would like, put the coffee cups out and like welcome them into the thing or whatever. Like those annual reviews that then do the like 1% into Bitcoin, 3%. I do think that's real. Like when people talk about that, talk about how that's just going to be this constant drumbeat of volume. That's probably still, yeah, that probably is like the biggest thing that's yeah. going to like keep happening. I think people too think that institutional managers or financial advisors are really mature, but they feel FOMO too especially because so much of their livelihood is dependent on them getting results for people that if, if people feel FOMO, then they feel FOMO because they lose out on clientele. Um, why hasn't Elon, you think, started uh, allowing Bitcoin payments? Because he said that they would do that once there's 50% clean mining. We're, we're already past that, like significantly for a long yeah. time. What, yeah. what do you think is the reason? I think because the... I think because the philosophy part of like Bitcoin versus USD is like still pretty small. Like I think that is still pretty small. It's kind of, or it's not, it's not normalized. Like it's there and loud, but the just kind of day-to-day -day thing of it isn't normalized, which again is why like Tesla, Tesla is like edgy now. And Elon himself is like edgy. Like not everyone loves like the way that he is and stuff and like everything that's happening with Twitter. And so, Again, you think that that's like kind of a good match and kind of a good match. Like, I think I think it's a combination of like the kind of change makers. Like, they only have so much juice to like push change. They only have so much juice to push change into their own organizations. So, 
when he is trying to do like all these other random things like going to mars and like like converting the world to electric vehicle and like all this stuff like the that just is his thing right now like that is his thing and so there aren't the like the it's not mo the answer is i don't think it's motivating enough for him mm. and that's the answer for apple for facebook for all like even just like dialing it back like why did facebook release libra because there wasn't like it wasn't motivating enough to them to kind of participate in the like bitcoin versus the dollar thing or they like don't buy it for whatever reason and so that's um i think yeah like i think about that a lot yeah and on that same kind of uh Line. Like you, you talked about how it would be nice if there's someone that started accepting Bitcoin, it, it could push adoption. I went to Bitcoin Miami and saw um, Jack Mahler speak and he was talking, he, great speaker, gets you pumped up. Like he was talking about how credit cards haven't changed in 60 years, how there's still like people that sit there, pretty much do nothing, take 2% fees. And he talked about how you can use, uh, I think they were doing something where you could like send USD, convert it to Bitcoin automatically over the Lightning Network, send it, it would go back into USD. And I was thinking this is going to be something that's massive. Like every, everyone's going to see how beneficial it is. Yeah. Why do you think something like that hasn't happened where there's actually mass adoption? Like it seems like a no brainer. Is it just the powers that be are like not allowing that to happen? Or what do you think? Like MasterCard and Visa are pushing back or I don't know. Why do you Thank think that hasn't been adopted? I think it's because it's still hard to explain. Still super mm -hmm. hard to explain. Even like I like I think you did a decent job of like recounting like what he said, and like I was there too, and yeah, it was something to that effect. I think it's still too hard to explain. Like, and mm -hmm. so when I when I started doing Bitcoin meetups in 2019, we met at this bar like all the time, and I was able to like talk to the bar owner and it just like explaining it to him, and it just like it business owners are so overwhelmed like with their day-to-day -day, that like they don't want to switch or like there's i think there are so right around the same time as when strike made that announcement there's another company called nidig that made a big announcement that they were going to onboard like 30 different regional banks to bitcoin and dude i don't it didn't happen like it didn't happen it got stopped like it got and not 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 stopped by like, politics or whatever like it's not like we hear this like oh regulations like oh like yes that's like the drumbeat in the background all the time but dude it's way more just like for everyone that's watching this it just like works in corporate america like it's that it's that like yeah. people that are on their break from corporate america watching bitcoin on youtube and being like the world could be better the world could be better cut out middlemen like cut out middlemen all that stuff it's everything they know about the frustration of their day to day that's what's stopping things like that's what's stopping things it's like it's decision makers across all these companies that are just scared of rocking the boat or they're tired they're just tired so they yeah. don't want to rock the boat and they're comfortable and then so good ideas have ceilings like good ideas have ceilings and that's the same like to me that's why it's not happening and then there's also the problem of it's hard to make money on the thesis of cutting out middlemen. It's hard to make money as a Bitcoin startup by cutting out middlemen. And yeah. so there's been lots of iterations of trying to kind of like thread that needle and figure that out. And it truly like isn't, hasn't been like cracked yet. Sure, makes sense. Price predictions. Not something that you really care about, I guess, as yeah. much in that yeah. you're not trying to get out. But obviously, like yeah. you pay attention to price. Obviously, if Bitcoin goes up to a million dollars, two hundred thousand dollars, like your life gets exponentially yeah. uh, easier. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, where do you see Bitcoin going, and like when, genuinely, uh, yeah. over the next yeah. two years, three years? Yeah. So I like I think all time high this year. Like I think all time high this year, and. I think then like then I'm going to be the guy that just like repeats like it depends on what happens like with the Fed and stuff. I'm just like if they if they cut and like start easing and whatever, um, that's going to be that's like the main thing. But yeah, I think all time high this year. OK.
What about next year? Next year, I mean, I just think it's going to keep. I don't know. I so I think it's going to be stair steps. I just think it's gonna, I think it's going to be a stair step grind, mm. or yeah, this year and next year. It's interesting watching how the ETFs work because we moved up pretty quickly. Obviously, we're three extra on the bottom. We moved up pretty quickly last year, but even like over the last couple of months, and there's not much of a retrace. We're not falling down much and consolidating. Like yeah. we're within a couple thousand dollars of the last couple of year yeah. high, even with hundreds of millions of dollars being sold. Um, and I think the same thing, like there's limited selling pressure. There's tons of buying pressure. And it's just like, it's just so consistent. And like you said, like there will be levels of people that come in to buy these ETFs as they're allowed to start selling them like financial advisors. It's just really hard here's, to here's the, reason, here's the reason why I say slow grind like up. Okay. And here's why I think about, so I largely, my, my favorite preferred like institutional guy or whatever that I like listening to is Jim Bianco. Like, I just think he taught like, I appreciate that he likes crypto and I appreciate that he's very good at talking about the bond market. And I appreciate that he's just like, he talks like a normal person. And doesn't sound like uppity like okay so i like that about him and i like how he talks about a lot right now that like sticky inflation like he's like he's he says this thing of like no landing like there's no landing like inflation is not going back to two percent and it's not gonna be zimbabwe eight nine percent like the new thing is just four percent like four percent inflation and so how we talked about how the s p 500 just like goes up with time and we talked about how interior square footage just goes up with time like bitcoin goes up with time and the current thesis that like i believe is that bitcoin goes up faster with time than the s p 500 and the interior square footage like of real estate because of its fundamentals so like i don't believe there's going to be a decoupling between like crypto and stocks or whatever and i don't believe that the economy is going to like crash and like financial assets are going to go down. Like, I think everything is going to go up. Everything measured in dollars goes up with time. And, and I think that's going to continue to happen. Awesome. Brian, thank you so much for coming on. We covered a lot. We're going to have to have you back on the channel. And as I said yeah. earlier, uh, your links are underneath the video. Anything you want to end on? I really appreciate it, man. Like, I'm thankful to people on YouTube talking about Bitcoin. I'm thankful to be on YouTube talking about Bitcoin. And so, no, like, and for people watching, like, the information you're finding matters. And so really think about the dollar versus Bitcoin in your own life and how you can increase the amount of your own personal Bitcoin usage across all your buckets. Awesome. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. All right. Bye. Sweet. That was really good. Sorry, yeah. I jumped around yeah. a little bit because I had yeah. I had so many different uh thoughts in my head too and like questions that came up as we were